Hello and welcome to my channel. Here's a drawing of the Mandalorian with Baby Yoda. Colored pencils on sandpaper. Should be fun. Let's get to it. I normally secure the paper with some tape and I secure it to a board underneath. And I'm going to be using these Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils. I'm going to start with this uh, light green one. It's a light yellowish green. I'm going to use that for Baby Yoda. But because we're going to have some lighter tones and some darker tones, I'm also going to be using this darker yellowish green just like an olive green but a little bit darker I guess and I'm also going to be using some ivory colored pencils for some of the brightest highlights now as you can see I already had a very simple rudimentary sketch before I started working which I created by tracing but it's not very detailed I'm gonna have to fill in the details as I go along here I'm working on Baby Yoda's face and basically I'm gonna cover all of this with this lighter green and blend that in with my totillions. these are homemade totillions, and they work pretty well with colored pencils on sandpaper. Sometimes it's a good idea to use uh, some other techniques but I often like to blend with those. Now you have to be careful to, to keep these clean edges so if I go over the edge somewhere I need to uh, clean it up and it's best to do that with a kneaded eraser rather than a regular eraser because the kneaded eraser tends to work better on sanded paper in my opinion anyway I'm gonna draw some highlights here on the top of the head there are some of these lighter hairs which are facing towards the light source and getting more light from above so this part of the head is going to be a little bit lighter and I'm using uh, an ivory colored pencil so this is not a white colored pencil I'm using I don't know if you can tell but it's a it's a yellowish light colored pencil and it's almost white but it, it like I said it's yellowish and it it combines a little bit better uh, with this green and now I'm gonna do the eyes or, or at least one of the eyes first and I'm gonna draw this catch light here the reflection in the eye and there are a couple of a uh, couple of them, um, and that should make the eyes look more lively and more interesting, obviously. And um, there are also some lighter areas around the pupils, and Baby Yoda has very large pupils. I guess uh, they. Uh, they wanted it to look cute so I'm filling this in with a black colored pencil uh, but I'm also adding some brownish tones that I see in my reference photo but the rest of it is going to be black and you can see now how nicely these highlights stand out so that the eyes look round and shiny uh, I'm putting in some areas of darker value on the inside of the ears as well. And I'm using a black colored pencil for that shamelessly. I, uh, I'm not going to try to combine this green with some other with some other colors. I I just think that the black colored pencil will do just fine for some of the darker areas and you can see that I'm blending them in using a totillion. 
Now, Baby Yoda has some wrinkles on the forehead and, and around the eyes, so in order for me to make these look more three-dimensional, I have to draw both the darker lines and the highlights on top of them uh, so that they are kind of facing upwards towards the light source. And I'm shading this uh, lower part of the face around the cheeks and the chin a little bit darker because that's tucked in and facing away from the light source. The light source is usually coming from above and um, that's why the upper part of the face and in the case of the Mandalorian the upper part of the helmet is always going to be at least a little bit lighter. Now moving on to the other eye and uh, working with a black colored pencil to put in those darker areas I'm going to have a few highlights here, uh, but they're going to be positioned slightly differently and I'm hoping that this won't make the eyes look asymmetric. Uh, if, uh, if it does, I'm going to have to make some modifications. So let me say a few words about uh, my materials, uh, the paper and the composition. So like I said, I'm using Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils and for blending I'm mostly using homemade paper totillions. Uh, for erasing I'm mostly using a Faber-Castell kneaded eraser. Uh, my surface, my medium is uh, 1000 grit sandpaper. It's a regular waterproof sandpaper that you can find in a hardware store. I find that these make a great surface for drawing with colored pencils. Um, some people would complain that this paper is not archival. That's not entirely true. And I've already as addressed the archival versus the non-archival issue in one of my previous videos I think it's greatly exaggerated and this paper performs really well and it's very very durable so if you can find a waterproof sandpaper with a fine grain something like an 800 or a, or a thousand grain that'll work really well with colored pencils as well as with pastel pencils or pastels for that matter. Uh, now the size of the paper is about mm, it's about uh, 9 times 12 inches or so maybe a little less maybe around 9 times 11 inches I'm not really sure Uh, but it's close to the usual size of my of most of my drawings. Now let me say a few words about the composition. I wanted both the Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian in this drawing because I had uh, some drawings of only Mandal uh, the Mandalorian. Now here I wanted to make it look like uh, Mando is carrying Baby Yoda in a backpack along with his other gear and I wanted it to be a kind of a backpack that um, that Luke Skywalker used in the first in the first Star Wars movie, A New Hope. So it's going to be kind of uh, grayish brown, and I'm going to add a strap over the uh, over the Mando's shoulder. So, so that it looks like he's carrying Baby Yoda in that backpack. Here I use this uh, Bant Ochre for ba Baby Yoda's clothes and initially I thought that the color was a little bit too warm and a little bit too vibrant but once I started blending it in uh, with this um, ivory color that I use for highlights I kind of got the uh, I got the tone that I wanted so that was not a problem and I used one of the darker browns f 
for the darker areas and the shadow areas along with the black colored pencil of course and I also uh, try to produce a nice looking texture so the the clothes doesn't uh, his clothes uh, don't look too smooth and the way you can do that is just by dragging the pencil uh, holding it sideways and it'll produce some texture and if you don't blend all of it in you can use that texture to make it look like uh, some kind of a rough material that can look like cloth or leather or something but anyway I'm uh, finishing the work on the baby Yoda's clothes and uh, adding some final touches to it as well as refining the texture a little bit uh, now I need to share with you a trick that I often use when I work with colored pencils on sandpaper sometimes when you have to work with a black colored pencil on top of the on top of the areas which you've already covered with some of the lighter pencils you may not get a very dark black or pitch black uh, that you may want to achieve so when that doesn't work you can go over those areas with a charcoal pencil and that will make the areas really dark so a black colored pencil works better if you apply it directly onto the sandpaper if uh, you're not layering it over a lighter colored pencil because then it will become a little bit duller and more grayish but like I said if you needed to use some of the lighter colors first and you didn't want to do all of that planning if you didn't want to plan ahead so much well the, you can always uh, create those dark uh, darker uh, tones using a charcoal pencil so I did one of the Yoda's hands which is resting on or holding on to Mando's shoulder and of course the uh, the upper edge or the upper side of that hand is lighter because it's facing upwards towards the light source and I'm pretty much done with Baby Yoda for now so I'm moving on to Mando's helmet now I've already done a couple of drawings of the Mandalorian the first one uh, was a full-size drawing of both uh, or rather a full figure drawing or full body drawing of both the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda and the second one uh, was mostly focusing on on the Mandalorian's aircraft the Razor Crest now in the third one I wanted a close-up portrait and I mostly focused on Mando's helmet and that was very similar to what I'm drawing now so if you want to see a larger more detailed drawing of the Mando's helmet you can check out that video so I'm gonna put the link to all of the videos in the description as well as in the end screen if you want to check those out as well I've also done some other Star Wars drawings so you might want to check those out as well if you're a fan of the of the Star Wars universe I'm working on the helmet like I said using some of the lighter grays first and I used a light cold gray or cool gray or whatever the name is for some of the lighter areas and then I'm working on top of that with a white colored pencil 
to pull some highlights for some of the shiny and reflective areas like for example the edges and uh, some of the some of the shiny parts uh, on the top of the helmet because uh, the helmet is made out of metal and because its top is round I'm going to need to shade it so that it looks like it's made out of metal and, it, and the way to achieve that is to create these highlights and to have a nice range of value to have a nice contrast between these darker areas and these shiny areas so that you can make it look like a reflective, uh, reflective object that is made out of metal. Now blending here is also important because this needs to be a little bit smoother than for example Yoda's clothes or uh, his face but you can still have a little bit of texture because, because even these metal items are not perfectly smooth so here I'm adding some more highlights to the top of the helmet and I'm blending those or spreading that white pigment around a little bit before I add some of the mid-tones and of course I'm using this Faber-Castell light grey for the mid-tones even though it's very very light and then I add a bit of black in the darker areas and then I use a tutelian again to push the darker pigment into those mid-tone areas and that way I create some nice transitions and if I feel like I need to push the range of value even further and enhance that contrast a bit more I simply go over the highlights one more time and reinforce those lighter areas with a bit more of the white or I can do the same thing with the darker areas by adding a bit more of the black colored pencil there are some uh, smaller details here that I'm working on right now and I need to be careful there because I don't want to ruin the edges there are a lot of clean edges here that I need to respect and if I want to create a nice looking realistic looking helmet but these smooth transitions Uh, very important if I want to create uh, something that looks like an actual helmet that's made out of metal so this area here is also a little bit darker but notice how around the edges there are some highlights and I can always emphasize those using our white colored pencil so that these edges really stand out against the darker areas for this dark area here in the middle I used a charcoal pencil again because as I've already explained charcoal is very very dark and sometimes you might want to use charcoal in addition to the colored pencil to create a greater range of value and to give more depth to your subject but one of the main reasons why I kind of cheated here by using charcoal in addition to the colored pencils was because uh, often when I worked with a black colored pencil over the lighter areas and tried to lay, uh, just go over them with a black color I was getting a muddied grayish dark gray color which I didn't really want so in order to create a much darker tone I would sometimes have to use a touch of charcoal pencil but 99% of it was done with, uh, with Faber-Castell polychromos colored pencils and these are not cheap by the way uh, these are high quality artists grade 
colored pencils uh, they are some of my favorite ones but sandpaper will wear them down fairly quickly but not quite as quickly as you think it would because um, you will when you work on sandpaper you'll have that feeling like you're wearing down your pencils very quickly but the truth is that you're also filling in the paper a lot more quickly because uh, a lot more, more of the pigment is staying on the surface of the paper so that's a good thing now here on these shoulder pads uh, there there is some insignia but I can't do those details now first I'm going to shape the uh, the entire shoulder armor by establishing those uh, darker tones first and then some mid tones and then finally uh, pulling some highlights but only after I do that I'll be able to refine some of those details so like I said this is my fourth drawing of the Mandalorian if I'm not mistaken, mistaken. Um, you should really check out the other ones if you want to I find that colored pencils really really work well on sandpaper with subjects like this one where there are a lot of details and uh, lots of uh, clean edges where you need a lot of precision and accuracy I imagine this would be a lot more difficult to do in pastel and pastel pencils but at the same time if I were working on regular paper this type of drawing would probably take me a lot more time. On sandpaper I can work a little bit faster, I can blend and layer more easily and most importantly I can always work from dark to light and as well as from light to dark and this is a huge advantage with colored pencils because it really allows you to refine uh, some of these details and edges and um, create a very very nice realistic and uh, detailed looking drawing so I'm adding the shadow area on the butt of this rifle here and uh, just uh, creating a mid-tone but also uh, creating a bit of texture deliberately so that it looks like it's made out of wood and now I'm gonna work around the shoulder but like I said because Mandalorian is carrying Baby Yoda in a backpack I'm gonna add a strap here because I want the backpack to be similar to what Luke Skywalker was using to carry the real Yoda, Master Yoda, around in the first movie in the swamp. And I'm also going to add some details to the backpack as well. because I don't want it look uh, I don't want it to look like Yoda is just hanging there um, so this area around the shoulder and around the armpit is a little bit darker and I also need to add some lighter details, some highlights to this uh, buckle here and I can add a bit of shadow around it so that it stands out a bit better and this was a pretty detailed and challenging drawing in the sense that um, 
I needed to make sure that everything was in place and that I didn't forget anything. So I'm refining the appearance of this insignia here, or this engraving, whatever it is, on his shoulder armor. The whole drawing took about three and a half, maybe four hours or so. So it's one of the longer drawings, I guess. But it was fun because I, I always uh, find working with colored pencils on sandpaper more enjoyable than working with them on regular paper because on regular paper this process would be a lot slower and probably a lot more difficult. So I'm not going to draw all the way to the edge of the paper, it's going to be like a vignette, like most of my drawings. But here I'm modifying the color of his clothes uh, on the on the sleeves uh, a little bit so that it looks a bit more grayish rather than warm brown as it looked initially. And I'm also adding some highlights and then some darker areas so that I can show some of these uh, wrinkles or folds in his clothes. There's no need to overdo it. I can just add some darker areas here and shade the right side a bit more so that it looks so that it looks a bit darker because it's facing away from the light source. Now I'm going to draw his robe, or whatever it is uh, visible of his robe here. I'm going to draw some some folds here as well, and I'm going to use my lighter colored pencil to try to create some texture so that the robe looks kind of, or, or the cape, whatever it is that he's wearing, so that this cape looks old and tattered. And naturally, I also need uh, a lot of shadow under the helmet. Uh, just a bit more work here on the clothes. And I'm blending several different tones of brown and gray until I get it to look as I want it and just adding some suggestions of folds in the clothes just basically adding some areas of darker value so that I can achieve a more three-dimensional look and then going back and working on the highlights a bit now finally I'm gonna do a bit of work on this chest plate or chest armor. And I'm defining some of the darker areas first. The reason why I'm doing that, like I said previously, is because sometimes it's a good idea to put in the black first because if I put some of the lighter colors first they, the, the black may end up looking gray rather than black and I want some parts of this armor to be very dark so that I can create some nice contrast
this part here is a little bit more elaborate so I'm just taking my time to draw some of these details with as much precision as my freehand style allows me I don't really care too much about precision and straight lines I just try to make them look as straight as I can with a with a free hand. There are very very few of my videos where I've actually used a ruler. In fact, I uh, I'm not sure if I can remember any right now. I'm uh, just drawing some lighter areas here on this chest plate and some highlights here and there. making some of these areas a bit smoother with a brush or a tutillion to avoid a texture that is too rough but in those areas where I want to bring back a little bit of texture I can always drag my pencil a bit and allow it to produce some texture so that I can make the surface of this metal plate a bit more interesting So there's another belt here on this other shoulder with some ammo, probably for the rifle, although I'm not an expert on Mando's equipment. Well, whatever it is, I need to draw some shadow around it and under it so that it looks more three-dimensional and finally moving on to the other shoulder as I'm going to be wrapping things up pretty soon this drawing by the way is going to be a present It was done back in May, but you're not going to see it on my channel until I'm allowed to publish it, which is going to be much later. Here I'm just trying to add some, uh, some details on this leather belt. I'm kind of hoping I won't overdo it because that's possible too. I just find that the ability to go both from light to dark and dark to light on sandpaper is such a huge advantage. It's something that can be very very difficult to do with some other types of paper and other types of media. Just a bit more shadow under these, uh, whatever they are. And on the sides of the body, under the shoulder, shoulder armor. And adding some highlights either with a white pencil or an ivory pencil. And now all I have to do is finish the shading of this uh, shoulder armor on the right and I'll be pretty much done. As long as I use the white colored pencil sparingly the highlights will really stand out and looks r look really nice on my drawing. But the key, I think, is to use your darkest darks and your lightest lights sparingly if you can. 
the drain is now finished. I'm just putting down some finishing touches. Trying to decide where to put my signature. I'm just going to put it in the lower left side of the paper. And that's it. Looks very nice and detailed with some very clean edges. I think it looks even better in real life. A very detailed drawing. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my other videos. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.